Hey everybody, this is the Vintage RVer again. We're getting into the process of taking apart the engine and the transmission, and you can see here I've taken off the uh, transmission, the uh, speed sender, the cable, and you can see it's pretty well rusted. So what I did is I gently clamped on a vice grip and then used a pretty sizable crescent wrench to get this off. But the thing we use the most on things like this is this handy thread unlocker ion activated thrust penetrating oil. And this stuff is a little pricey but it's worth it. Uh, all of the bolts get it. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this transmission off. I'm going to take the linkages. I'm going to disconnect the intercooler lines the linkages that go up to the throttle. Here, as you can see, the kick down. This is what they call a kick down um, leader here, kick down lever. And what it does when you really stomp on the gas, this thing shifts, upshifts the uh, transmission for you and gets it into a, uh, into a gear that allows you to do hill climbing and all that. So what I've done so far is I've been doing a lot of degreasing. I've gone through and uh, Spray degreaser all in here uh, is slowly evaporating. And I've also taken off the air conditioner. Uh, some RVs, a lot of RVs came with uh, air conditioner units. And uh, so what we've done here is unbolted from this point here. And there's another bolt over towards the, the um, alternator taken off the radiator hose, top radiator hose with the circulator hoses here. You can see these two there. Those are two hoses that go to your heater. This, you can see the thermostat inside. Most of these V8s, Dodge V8s, have the thermostat on the top. Actually a lot of Fords, but some others have the same setup. So you have a thermostat in there. And then what I've been doing here slowly is degreasing all of this and getting all the crud off of it. Uh, like I said, in preparation, I'm going to take the valve covers off, get those repainted, going to have to take off the intake manifold and get that ready so when I transport this we can install this. Um, so that's what's happening there. You can see some of the parts on the floor. The fuel oil filler, AC belt. These are the two heater hoses here. Top rad hose which looks really really toasty. Unfortunately we're going to just replace that. This actually comes with a inner coil uh, I've seen these before. They're to keep the hose from collapsing under pressure. So I'm going to keep that coil. And then in here, we've got the York compressor with its bracket and tensioner pulley. It's in good shape. Uh, it doesn't seem to leak at all. So we're going to reuse that. At some point later, we'll reinstall. So that's what we got going on here right now. And uh, I plan on swapping out this alternator for a much larger alternator. I've got that sitting inside here, right up there. There's my larger alternator. So I'm going to take that alternator out next to my multimeter, which is very handy. Put that down there. Bring this bad boy out. Now this was supposedly sized for the Dodge V8, but we'll see how that works because this just appears to be a little bit, a little bit larger in setup, but it looks like I should be able to get the, this bracket up here, this one that's up here, to work, we'll make sure it doesn't roll off, to this one up here. And then I've got mounting holes down here, which I believe I can make work with this bracket. If I can't make it work with this bracket, I'll show you how to make another bracket uh, or find another bracket. Uh, I usually keep every bracket I find, I try to keep. Uh, and then that way, we can get this alternator 65 amp taken off. This is a 120 amp. This is dub double, double the capacity of this alternator. So uh, I'd rather have that, even though we're putting mostly LED fixtures and everything. You know, you got a laptop, you got a TV, you know, you get all those things, and they do add up after a while. So it's just better if you got an opportunity to swap out to a better alternator and you can make it work. 
go for it. It's actually pretty simple. I'll do a separate video for that alternator swap out. Uh, I'll try to, to uh, make sure I don't swear too much when I'm doing it because I have a feeling sometimes these things look simple and then you get into them and then they're a little bit more involved than you ever imagined they were going to be and uh, then we'll go from there. So in the meantime I'm going to continue disconnecting some of these items here. We've got that's a fuel line that runs under there comes into here so I gotta keep that that's good and you can see some bolts under here so what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to take most of the bolts off the transmission I'm going to see if I can get to all of them and uh, and then I'm going to have to reconfigure the chain so that I can get the engine up a little bit get a block under the transmission and then relieve the weight and be able to pull the transmission physically off of the engine itself and then we'll be in good shape to finish the cleanup and then we'll be in good shape to get it on a pallet and strapped down and prepped for shipment. All right, that's it for now. And I will get these other videos off to you shortly. Take care. Thanks for watching.